In today's video, I'm going to be discussing a shocking announcement in regards to a 31% increase to SNAP benefits, also known as food stamps or sometimes referred to as EBT for the low income. I also do want to talk about the details of a couple other reports that were recently released, talking about 58%, 61%, and 16% as it pertains to food prices. That's the focus of this video. Let's talk through the details. All right, now, first off, as you probably noticed, this video is talking talking about food. Who doesn't enjoy talking about food a little bit, right? Well, as a result of that, let me throw something out there really quickly. I don't know. I don't want to assume anything, but I think it might be safe for me to say, I think all of us here in the community probably agree over the last couple of years here, food prices have gone up substantially. Now, again, I don't like to assume anything, but let me know down below in the comment section if I'm a crazy fool for saying food prices have gone up a lot over the last couple of years here and continue to rise. I mean, here's the thing. All of us should do a little bit of a project. This would actually be pretty interesting. Over the next couple months here, we should all save our receipts from the grocery store. And then in about, I don't know, two, three, four months, something like this, we could all look back and compare our receipts from today or this week or next week uh, compared to a couple months from now in the future and see have prices really gone up on the same old things that we're all buying. I mean, let's just be real for a second. Do all of us really buy the same things week after week after week? I'm not sure about you, but that's exactly what we do. I mean, li we literally buy the same items week after week. It's the same old thing. It's very rare for us to buy anything different, right? It's just kind of the same thing. So again, it would not be that hard to save our receipts and compare them in a couple months and say, oh, wow, look at that. Prices have gone up yet again, and they have been for the last several years here, okay? Anyway, so that's the detail here. And again, I want to break this down because this report I just got done reading is talking about how SNAP benefits have increased 31% over the last three years. That is not a typo. That's nuts. Why would SNAP benefits go up 31% just in the last couple of years here? Well, I don't know. Gee, maybe because food prices have gone up so much? <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason why, right? Remember, SNAP benefits are adjusted every year with a COLA. I'm not sure if most people realize that, but just like your Social Security and other fixed income benefit that you might be receiving, uh, those are adjusted every year with a COLA. Guess what? SNAP benefits are also adjusted every year as a result of the COLA as well, okay? Interesting, right? So as a result, let me share with you the details of the reports here. Now, first off, let me share with you really quickly these other percentages really, really fast here. This will also give a little uh, preface into the details of these reports here, okay? So this other report that was released is showing across all income levels. So again, literally doesn't matter. It could be somebody with a you know a $5,000 per year income. It could be $50,000. It could be 100. It could be $200,000 of income per year. Across all income levels, this report is now showing 58% of people are cutting back on other spending just to make sure that they can put food on the table, okay? That's across all income levels. Even people with a high six-figure income are cutting back 58% of people on other expenses so that they can put food on the table. That's nuts. I mean, I don't know if that's a big number or not, but to me, in my perspective, in my opinion, that is a high number, nearly 60% of people cutting back. Now get this, for those people with an income under $50,000 a year, so 50 grand or less a year of income, 61% of these people have cut back on other spending, uh, again, other expenses, so that they can put food on the table, and again, when I say other expenses, this could be, I don't know, maybe they you know, are cutting back on driving a little bit to save a little bit of money on gas. Maybe they're not you know, replacing their shoes every you know, couple of years. Maybe they're trying to get a couple you know, more months out of their shoes. Or maybe rather than buying clothes, they're trying to wear the clothes a little bit longer. Maybe cutting back on you know, trying to do laundry you know, every 10 days versus every seven days to cut back on laundry expenses. Again, I don't really know. I'm just giving examples here, but cutting back on other expenses. And again, it all counts right? Yeah, I know. It's not really a great way to live, but um, this is the situation. Now, the report also went on to show 16% of people are not affected whatsoever by high grocery prices. Well, I'm going to say this much. Hooray for them, okay? <laughs> Fine. Hooray for you, 16% of people that are not affected by high grocery prices. I'm happy for you. Great life you're living, okay? If, if that's any of you here in this community, seriously, I'm happy for you. But that is not the reality for most people right now. Uh, most people do not fall into that 16% of people that are not affected whatsoever by high grocery prices. I don't think that's the reality, but... 
Again, probably why that percentage is only 16%. But you can see there, from the vast majority of people out there, between 58 and 61%, roughly across the board, across all income levels, are basically cutting back on spending to basically put food on the table. That's a sad situation, okay? Now get this, okay, remember this much as well. If you are a SNAP beneficiary, food stamps, EBT, whatever, it's all referring to the exact same thing, right? The Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. The beneficiaries out there, which by the way, right now, there's about 43 million households households out there right now that get SNAP benefits. So a huge percentage of our population rely on these benefits to put food on the table. And again, I know just as much as you do, these benefits are way too low. It basically accounts for nothing, right? Which by the way, it accounts for a daily, uh, a daily rate of about $6 a day. Who can eat on $6? I'm going to say this much. You can't even go to your local fast food joint anymore and buy a $6 meal. I mean, it's like virtually impossible to get anything uh, substantial out of a fast food restaurant for $6 anymore. Years ago, yeah, easily you could, right? You could probably get a couple meals for 6 bucks. Today, <laughs> not a chance, right? You get like nothing. They're like, oh, wait, you can get some fries for 6 bucks. Uh, that's about it. Maybe a bag. You can get you a little stack of napkins, maybe a, uh, a sauce cup to go with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Seriously, that's about all you get these days for $6 at a fast food joint. Uh, but anyway... So here's what happens. The way that they peg how much benefits go out and how much benefits increase is off of the thrifty food plan. Maybe you've heard this before, but basically what they do is they call it a thrifty food plan. So what they do is they go through a grocery store, they pick out a basket of basically different foods, and they basically peg the prices of these foods off of the thrifty food plan, and then they adjust SNAP benefits according to this thrifty food plan. Okay, it's not a very great uh, depiction of what benefit or what benefit it should be sitting at and how much you know prices have actually gone up but this is what they do but anyway here's what they found back in 2021 a family of four uh based on the thrifty food plan was 675 dollars guess what it is today $975 based on the thrifty food plan is that's what it is for a family of four okay on a monthly basis by the way okay so that has gone up by $300. That's nuts to see that just in the last three years, okay? So this just shows right here, even with the thrifty food plan, this shows just as well that food prices have gone up substantially just in the last couple of years here on everything that we're buying. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be produce. I mean, produce is very expensive. I mean, here's the thing. I've seen from many of you down below in the comments section, you've told me your stories before and I've seen it, okay? I've seen emails, I've seen tons of people writing this. It is very expensive to eat healthy. I agree with you, it is expensive to eat healthy. When you're looking at different options out there and saying, hey, I can buy um, a green pepper for $3 or I can buy like, you know, whatever else that maybe not as a, a healthy of a food option, but you can get way more quantity for, you know, the, the, the less healthy food options than you can for fresh produce. Fresh produce is very expensive, but yet they continue to say, hey, we want to regulate what you're doing with your SNAP benefit and make sure you're only buying produce and healthy options. Okay, fine. I'm going to get like a pack of bananas and I'm going to get like three apples and a, a green pepper, maybe a red pepper and maybe like an avocado for like $100. <laughs> you know what I mean? Obviously, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not that much. It's so expensive to eat this produce. So it's nuts out there with what's going on. But this is exactly what they're showing. Now, again, let me point out really quickly. Have your SNAP benefits really kept up with the food price increases over the last couple of years? Again, just like the colas for your SNAP, uh, for your SNAP benefits and your other fixed income benefits that you receive, have your colas ever cupped up? The answer is no, right? We should give the cola a cute new name, which is basically something along the lines of, it does not keep up, right? The raise that never keeps up, right? Because <laughs> that's literally what it does. It just never keeps up. Uh, we can continue to look at the cola and say, you know, it's a great thing. Don't get me wrong. It's great. We'll gladly take it. And it's a nice adjustment to benefits, but it continues to fall behind. And the beneficiaries are always one step behind. Well, more than one step, multiple steps behind where real prices are. So anyway, a couple of reports here I wanted to share with you really quickly. When it comes down to food prices, the thrifty food plants, SNAP benefits, food stamps, EBT, whatever we talk about here. And um, hope this one helps you out. So as always, leave your comments, your questions, your feedback down below. Until next time, please subscribe down below. Totally free to do so. The big subscribe button down there. Also, if you'd like to hit the like button or the thumbs up button down there as well, totally free. Otherwise, go back and check out any of the other thousands and thousands of videos here on the channel in the video library or those that have hand selected for you down below in the description or at the top of the comment section 
enjoy those as well. Or the ones you see on your screen right now. Have a nice day. Enjoy those videos. Thanks for watching. Truly appreciate it. And until next time, have a nice day. And I'll catch you again later in this